Hey everybody, Jonas, Rob, we're in Sweden. We're gonna show you how to do a hyperlapse. If you look behind me, this is actually a really crappy day to do a time lapse. It's really gray. Uh, you can't really see the clouds moving very much, but you can still do a lot of really cool stuff even in this weather. Uh, and we're gonna show you how. I don't claim to be the expert in doing this. There's probably a lot of people doing things differently, but I want to show you my way. Uh, I have my tripod, I have my camera set up here. And uh, the first thing I usually like to do is I go through, I find my framing, and I find a spot somewhere in the frame. Uh, in this case, I have a building, I have a Ferris wheel, I have a tree and a big tower behind me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a spot on, uh, on the building, and I'm gonna make sure that spot stays roughly in the same spot of the frame. So uh, how do I do that? Well, usually what I do is I, I use one of the little uh, squares on the, um, in the viewfinder, focal points, and I'll try to keep that uh, right in the same spot the whole time. So as I'm moving, I'm making sure that that stays in, in the same spot. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about are my camera settings. Uh, what I really like to get is something we call a motion blur of people and things that move in the periphery of the image. Like in the frame, I might have people walking past or I might have a car driving past. And I like to get that sort of as a blurry, almost like a, looks like they're moving really fast even though I'm also moving. Aperture right now is 22, which is as high as I can go. And my shutter speed now is 15. My ISO is 100. And the next really important thing about doing a hyperlapse is, of course, your own movement, because that's what the hyperlapse is, is a, is a moving time lapse. And uh, what you want to try and do uh, is, is get a pretty steady movement, uh, forward or backward or sideways, wherever you're going. This is pretty ideal, actually, for a hyperlapse, because you see how the ground is divided up into tiles, and they're all the same size. This, this space here is, is, for what I want to do today, perfect for my hyperlapse. So what I'm gonna do is for every frame, I'm gonna move the, the width of, of one tile. Um, but of course, not every place you wanna do a hyperlapse is gonna have this setup. So you gotta figure out other ways to do it. What I usually do is then take my, uh, my foot like this. So I take one picture and I move it forward one foot. Take another picture, move it forward a foot. And then of course you will get the same distance every frame, which is perfect. And that brings us to the frames. What I do is, uh, when I take the picture, the pictures is that I use a remote control. I like this because it's easy, I can have it in my hand the whole time, and as I'm moving my tripod and my camera forward, I can you know, press the button down here while still holding onto the tripod. It really makes it easier. I mean, you can obviously use the button on your camera as well, but this just, just makes these things easier. I usually set up the frame, and then I Move it forward, one tile. Um, take the picture first, of course. <laughs> Move forward one tile, take another picture. Set up the frame, make sure I have the same spot um, in the same place in my viewfinder. Move it forward, take a picture, move it forward, take a picture. And in between, I just make those little checks and make sure that I'm, I'm actually going the right way and I'm, I'm keeping the same point and center. We are back in the studio. We've brought all of our images into the computer. I'm gonna show you how you're gonna take these raw images. You're gonna process the raw images. You're gonna then put them in a sequence in After Effects, stabilize the whole thing and export it. And it's gonna look amazing. I've got on our hard drive, a folder called Hyperlapse Central Station with all my raw images all the way down through here. And if you open any one of them up, you can see it's pretty flat, but that's the nature of the raw image. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them into Lightroom. So now that I have Lightroom open, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate, I already opened the folder of Hyperlapse Central Station. If you haven't done this already, then you go up here to Add Folder, and then you navigate to your Hyperlapse Central Station. Click OK, opens that sucker up. All the images come in like so. And then you just say import. And that's that button right down there. Since I've already done it, I'm just gonna cancel this whole operation and navigate to my Hyperlapse Central Station. Now what you can see is down here along the bottom in my library view, I have all of the images. So I'm gonna do, click the first one, I'm gonna drag all the way to the back, 
I'm gonna shift click to select all of them. This is on a Mac, of course. And then what I like to do is I like to find an image about halfway through, we'll say this one right here so I can process it. Um, and then I go up here to develop and then I start playing around with the image. This is my ability to process the raw image. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is the sky is a little bit brighter than the bottom, not a problem. So what I like to do, I start off, I take the clarity, bump the clarity way up, make things pop. Add a little bit of vibrancy back because when you add clarity, it tends to decrease some of the colors a little bit. Take my shadows, I increase the shadows, I decrease the highlights. Um, and that allows me to like see the whole thing just a little bit more. Everything's kind of in the same uh, general exposure level. Um, do something like that. Now what I like to do, I go down here. Mm, I think that looks okay. Um, I'm gonna add a gradient filter to the whole thing. So I just drag it, just like so. <laughs> now, if you'll see the settings that I have on my gradient filter, I've decreased the exposure just a teeny bit already. Well, the one thing that I've done is uh, the temperature is slightly decreased, so it makes it a little bit blue. The exposure is already just a little bit un you know, low. And then um, uh, sometimes I'll play with the contrast, make the clouds pop and stuff, um, but I don't really need to do that at the moment. But that looks pretty sharp. Uh, here, I'll, I'll click to the next image just so you can see the difference before and after. That was before, that's after. It looks awesome, I think. Okay, now that we've adjusted this one single image the way we want, we basically go over here to this little button and we sync all of the different ones. We wanna sync it and make sure all of these are clicked because that's all things that we did. Click synchronize, and then basically this is the most awesome thing about Lightroom is that it synchronizes all of the images in your sequence. See that? It's going through every single one of them and slowly creating thumbnails and showing you what it's actually done. Now, once you have all of them still selected, you wanna go up here to file and you wanna just export them as JPEGs. So I'm gonna go put it into Hyperlapse CS, bring them in as a uh, custom sequence hyper dash one through, I don't know, four or 500 or something, whatever it turns out to be. I decrease the size to about 2,500 just so that they're still large enough images, but they don't overwhelm my hard drive. I still have the raw, so if I need to do another time lapse, I can do that. I click export and in After Effects now. So we've got the program open. Now I'm just gonna show you how you might do this in a new composition beginning from the beginning, so to speak. <laughs> okay, so we'll go composition, new composition. Um, in this case, I need about 15 seconds, so at uh, 1920 by 1080, done. Now, in our project window here, I right click, uh, import, file. This is the cool thing about doing a time lapse. You click the first image in your sequence, and for some reason it's two, because the other one is, I think, at the bottom. Yeah, but I'll just click two. It knows what we're doing. And you want to make sure that JPEG sequence is clicked and it's on, and you open them like that, and it brings in all of your images as one little video file. See, I can bring that and drop that into my composition. I'll zoom out, and you can see that this image is actually pretty large. It's way larger than my HD screen. So what I'll do is I'll just grab these corners and bring the size down a little bit. Now, if I was to just play this, and I'll sh kind of show you uh, how it plays you know, as it renders through, all these images are slightly off-center. And so as I'm moving towards this central station, it's very jittery. And uh, you're seeing it in slow motion right now, but when you play it in real speed, it's just like jitter, 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 jitter. And so to fix that, you are using the power of After Effects using a technique called Warp Stabilizer. So while you're still clicked on this sequence, you go up here and I'll just kind of show you where it is. It's in Effect, Distort, and you click on Warp Stabilizer. Now, this will take a while to run through, analyze in the background, so I have another composition where I've already done this, so I'll just skip ahead. Um, and the only thing now that I've done, normally when it does warp stabilize, the, uh, at least for me, the standard is to stabilize crop and auto scale. Now, what you'll notice is that if I do that, for some reason it wants to crop it way down, and that's because I'm moving in on, in this, on this image and it's trying to like, figure out how to stabilize it and crop it just right. I don't know exactly why it does it. But the one thing I do is you go in with the framing and I just say stabilize only. 
And so, as you can see, now, and I just try to play this real time a little bit, it is locked on to that central station, to that building, and it's slowly moving forward. And the only time that it gets off a little bit is if I skip a square or I do something weird and it, it, you can sense that jitter, but this is a really nice, smooth movement. And I'm just pretty amazed that you can do something like this. And so that's your full image. Now, uh, all I gotta do, whoops, I don't know why I did that, is go up here to uh, Composition, Add to Render Queue, and we'll export it. And voila. And let's see what it popped out as I've already rendered this. And when it's all said and done, this is what it looks like. Whoa, that's awesome. Of course, I hope you liked that little tutorial on how to make a hyperlapse. We're not the experts, but it's a pretty simple technique, so we thought we'd share it with you all. Um, all you need is a tripod and your camera and a way to slowly, incrementally move. That's the most important part, I've found. You also need to make sure that your composition is well thought out. You're not getting a lot of trees moving by, because if you just zoom in on a building or you pan by a building like we did here in Paris, that seems to work pretty well. If you've done any of these, you know, share your site, share what you're doing in the comment section below. I'll try to subscribe to you as well. We have a new book coming out, by the way. It's called the Sci uh, How to Make Science Films. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have one right now, or else I'd show you. They're being printed right now. So I'm gonna leave information in the description below. Check that out. Um, be sure to pick one of those up. I'd really like to see uh, what you think of it when it comes out. And we've got more of these coming out, especially to accompany the new book. Okay, we'll see you in another how-to video. Thanks for watching. All right, here's a question for you. Do we as documentary filmmakers have an actual responsibility to tell the truth? Of course, you might think, of course, that's a silly question, but it's not so simple. Oh man, Jonas and I are going on this kayak trip. Ah, oh, I think we packed way too much.